come to the uh, mecca of Audi and now uh, become the major dining facility as well. So we're at uh, Dining APR here in town. I'm gonna hopefully get a tour and bring uh, bring everybody along here on camera. So we'll we'll see what we uh, we'll come up here with today. Lots of Audis in the parking lot. So this is a I think this is like a hundred thousand square feet, two different facilities or something like that. But we're gonna go figure that out here today see what it's all about yeah that's a pretty sick entryway I want something like this there's all the BMWs <laughs> this is the APR side So are there two separate teams? There's APR and Diamond, and then are they still run as two separate businesses? I mean, how does that work? It's being melded more and more. Yeah. Uh, the engineering side of it uh, is very fluid and they have a lot of shared resources. Okay. Um, they blended them quite a bit recently, which is for the better, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, in total, we have uh, be 14 software engineers slash calibrators and 21 hardware engineers, we include the interns. So will so we ever see APR parts on a, on a BMW? No. Okay. Uh, they'll still be brand specific, so okay. uh, that, that will not change. Uh, we're starting to go more into Mini again. They're starting to go back into Porsche. So we're going to try and keep them separated in that regard. Ah, okay. uh, cool. I mean, we can share a lot of resources. I mean, their, their prowess in general has always been uh, on the software side. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're leaning on them heavily on the software side, more as uh, the historical dine-in uh, in our engineers are more focused on the hardware side, mm -hmm. uh, which is where they don't really go into like in suspension and everything else. That's kind of mm -hmm. new to them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're great on the power parts, but don't really get the suspension like mm -hmm. dine-in ever has. So. Um, yeah, I just finished up install on my uh, on my M3. There, there's just su there's such a clear difference in you know you just take your pick of any sleeve kit, right? sure. and, and so there there's this like why you're doing a sleeve kit on your car? Mm -hmm. like, no, I don't think you understand. There, there's a there's a I mean, the shocks are adequate, especially for what mm -hmm. I'm doing on the, exactly. on the M3. And I've gone and done these crazy, you know, remote reservoir suspensions mm -hmm. and driving around town. It's terrible. I mean, the, the factory electronic shocks are actually very good. Yeah. Uh, they can be tweaked, and we are in the process of providing a going down, down that yeah. path. Uh, it may see that at some point, but uh, it's still very early at this point. But, mm -hmm. uh, but there's really no point in switching those out. I mean, especially the cost involved. I mean, yeah. you might as well just tweak what you can. So, yeah. Hence why we do the. I had adjustable spring kit basically. I yeah. retain all that. Cool. Uh, so I think we'll kind of start on the bottom end here, uh -huh. work our way up and back down, okay. go around. It's probably awesome. easy to do. Cool. So this is a uh, main lobby, obviously. Uh, this facility was built in 2003 or six. Uh -huh. The dates are probably off, but early 2000s, uh, APR is built in the ground up specifically for APR. Mm -hmm. uh, so that you'll see a lot of nuance specific things in here that's uh, you won't see in a lot of buildings mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of nice it's very very well done it's there are two buildings uh there's two buildings uh, there's the original building which is this this main aisle and the other side mm -hmm. uh and then the other side which we expanded in 2009 uh, which is more warehousing and production and stuff mm -hmm. uh, in the early days this was the uh, original workshop for APR, uh, where all the r and essentially occur, uh, at one point, I want to say 2006-2007, uh, this garage has all the R&D and uh, six or seven race tunes, which mm -hmm. to me amazes me because there's hmm. not enough lifts for that. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, they were they were crammed in here, jacking them up on yeah, so, jacks, and jack stands. Yeah. Yeah. So this is R&D, or do you guys work on customer cars here? Uh, t in today's world, this uh, garage is really APR's garage more than anything else. So there. they'll they'll make a part, come out here, and see if it works. Basically, Go this, back this is kind of the end part of it. I mean, this is the engineering side first, but yeah. this is all of the physical installs and have Also in here in the back, you'll see a lot of the engine program. They have a great engine program. Mm. 
uh, for you know, saw like the engine out in the lobby there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a 500 horsepower four banger, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Really, but, uh, but they have uh, the engine shop is based out of this back here. They have a lot of the CNC machines and uh, equipment in the back. Although this is one of those items that's going to be moved elsewhere in the building. Mm -hmm. Hence why it's kind of in the cluttered corner at the moment. At one point, uh, originally, this whole top area uh, was going to be a second story for offices, mm -hmm. uh, but I guess they ran out of money as a story. And so it just became this mezzanine, which is kind of overstocked the market. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the one office of the APR side area of the photo booth. Uh, Aaron from uh, APR, who's my counterpart on that side. Uh, there's also Talia's in here, which is our events coordinator, uh, looking for some additional people for creative as well right now but so this is one of the offices uh, as you can see we like to keep a lot of parts <laughs> <laughs> a lot of uh, trinkets in here that's cool. Uh, years gone by a lot of wreck race cars and just stuff <laughs> artists like stuff uh, all right yeah that's an artist too uh, this would be the other office for marketing mm -hmm. uh, back inside uh, our new marketing director or VP or whatever will be coming in here at some point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just another office. But very stark difference between APR and Diner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this originally was the CEO's office. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably going to be changed out to essentially a video studio. Yeah. Uh, so we can get rid of the photo booth in there, get it over here. Uh, basically have like a little couch talk session on Facebook Live. And be, this would be a great room for so, that. So, uh, figure we had this nice isolated room. It's not affected by all the natural light and everything else. You yeah. can get a lot of stuff done in here. Yeah. So, that's kind of sweet. the idea. Sales and issues are working together. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, kind of intermixed between everybody. So, yeah. uh, you got Dynamo, you got APR, you got a little bit of a lot of caps. So, yeah. So, uh, I think right now we have, between the two brands, there's 15 total sales and warranty folks. Mm -hmm. um, fluctuates constantly, it seems like. But mm -hmm. That's kind of where we hang out. Uh, Dynan has three APR, as far as on the warranty side. Uh, Dynan has three, and APR has three as well, actually. Yeah. So. A bunch of young car guys. Pretty much. Take care of <laughs> stuff. Uh, but pretty much at any given time, probably two guys are out in the field, uh, whether it be international or domestic travel. Yeah. Uh, right now, we have a guy out in Europe on the APR side. We have two guys in Colorado visiting the dealerships up there. Mm -hmm. In Borea County, we didn't tell me to bother. So this would be uh, the engine dyno and what the first chassis dyno uh, you see. Engine on here. Because Steve still owns the, the IP for the engine builds, he didn't sell that to you guys, or we the the racing program and the engine program uh, we sold back to Steve. Got it. Okay. Uh, when he left Ganassi Racing, uh, he came back and essentially purchased the two service centers from Dynan. Mm -hmm. He's got two service centers in North mm -hmm. here in NorCal as well. Uh, then about a year after that, uh, we sold what was left of the engine program back to him. Uh, and to, right now, uh, they've changed the name to Carbon. They have a couple uh, uh, R8s that they race now. Uh, yeah. They actually did really well at the last couple of races. Um, but they're actually running uh, Audis, which still kind of makes me chuckle. He's working on Mercedes too. Yeah, he's working on Mercedes. He actually yeah. drives a Mercedes, at least yeah. last I saw. Um, I guess just had enough BMW to pull out, needed a break. But, uh, but yeah, he's a little dealer out there, and kind of doing his, his thing. But his his passion has always been the racing side. So yeah, the service center and everything's really just a, a way to keep in the game and fun. So, yeah, uh, he's doing what he loves. <laughs> yeah, cool. So. First of the chassis dynos, Dynapack Dyno. Uh, this is. APR had one of these as well. Uh, we brought ours and replaced their pods with ours because ours was slightly newer, but essentially the same. Um, mm -hmm. Check it out. You can go in there. 
Yeah, all the calibration is back. It's a meeting anyway. So th at this point, this dyno isn't used nearly as much as uh, the other you know, one, two to be two, uh, just because most of the calibrators don't like having to do all the extra work for keeping off all the, uh, the hubs. But probably yeah. more importantly, at least on the APR side specifically, is the Mustang guns that we have can actually simulate with really good accuracy, zero to 60, quarter mile times, and everything else, whereas that back at. Yeah. So, um, I'm not sure what this car's in here for, but Doing I had something. a look at the chart, I would say it's probably a stage three kit. Yeah. Just by looking at the powers. Okay. <laughs> so, interesting. Over in here, we got uh, two 3D printers, we're running right now, which is odd. Uh, in general, we seem to be running 24-7. It's supposed to take forever, but our process for uh, doing exhaust in particular, there's a lot of Lego pieces involved that we uh, we build and use for uh, prototyping. I'll get that part of the way, but I see that firsthand. But uh, this was... Uh, Nine and old one that we brought with us, and this is APRs only just uh, upgraded this past year. Uh, the point of that was uh, in the early going, they actually made a uh, a 19 inch wheel in the bigger one, a full wheel, just to see how what they could actually do with it. Yeah, and it's a full wheel. <laughs> and it was very impressive to see. Uh, the nice thing about the the bigger uh, 3D printer is it actually does high temp plastics and everything else. So you can actually uh, 3D print. Uh, essentially engine bay components and run them and it'd be fine. Or test it up to whatever the temperature it is. So this one's more of the fixture one, or this is more of the uh, production piece to actually test. Uh, what, the I, I don't even know how that, it, it just, it, it doesn't CNC plastic, it actually molds plastic. How do these things work? Uh, actually, this one, this one is actually working. Just up on the top. So it's, it's basically laying down a small layer of uh, plastic, line by line, just piece by piece. Mm. Um, so is it is it liquid plastic that it spits out out of a needle, or basically? Yeah. But I mean, each, there's different types of substrates that you can buy, different varying uh, uh, heat ratings and all that. So, uh, that particular one is the normal one, the higher end one for transition. Yeah. I mean, once you once you have the machine, does the actual material cost a lot of money? Uh, yeah, each one of these plates, as an example, like on this one, there's a little base plate that you build off from. Yeah. Each one of those base plates, and I could be totally off on this, but for some reason I want to say each one of those plates themselves is about 50 bucks. Uh, and then the material uh, comes in, I mean, they're relatively expensive to run. Yeah. Um, but just for the time. So that plate is used once, the product is built Correct. Right. And then you're switching it out. I mean, you, technically you can try and reuse them, but it's a lot yeah. of extra work to try and scrape everything off. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, what, once that's done, it goes into uh, this vat here. Yeah. And that basically uh, tears away all the, the loose uh, structural plastic that you don't actually want. Mm -hmm. uh, so it actually get a finished part for hand part in there. So these are fed off of some like SolidWorks and Dad and... Yeah, and that's what uh, Brian, who we're talking to, does most of that. Yeah. Uh, this is a lot of that. And then they can take that plastic part and make it out of whatever needs to be made out of metal or... Yeah. Like I said, we'll, once you get over to the other side, you'll see a lot of that in action. So this particular room would be the last room of the original building. Mm -hmm. uh, right now it's essentially cable bits uh, for both brands. Uh, nothing finished goods, but just pieces for kits, whether it be bolts and hoses and God knows what else. Uh, red bins being APR, blue bins being diamond. That's smart, yeah. This will be changing at some point as well, uh, but this room is, I'll, I'll call it our clean room, for lack of a better descriptor, but this is where like Dynatronics is programmed is over here on this bench. Uh, and on the APR side, if they have to do uh, any 
you see the drilling location flashing that way, they do it in here. Um, between all the various boards and uh, cases and everything, that's where all the, this stuff, that stuff is done. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also going to be moved at some point in the near future, this kind of stopgap location for the time being. So right now it's uh, shipping, receiving, and finished goods, all in this full end U. Uh, white boxes being APR, brown being dynamic. Uh, this area is also being moved uh, uh, to another place on the other end of the building. Uh, eventually, this is actually going to be just receiving and some of the finished goods, probably the smaller stuff. And a lot of the bulk stuff uh, would actually be on the far side of the building. Where we're going to have a new receiving department. So is that like UPS height and then freight height? Or? Basically. You see a bunch of carts of APR exhaust. That's kind of the big focus. They just released a couple uh, different kits for the UCI last week, I Maybe it was the week before. Um, but right now we have six welding booths over here. And other, they've been doing it now themselves for four years. But in general, it's still a relatively small uh, amount of SKUs. Mm -hmm. Versus Dynan as you see a couple of racks behind here with a bunch of Dynan pictures. Uh, there's actually quite a bit more than that over there. Off-site, we have another storage facility that has a bunch of the low volume and stuff. Uh, I mean, there's some of our older stuff, like old, old stuff that we do, you know, 10 a year. And it's like, you might have to here. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's, you see a lot of... Uh, Various and styles of how stuff was done, and you get all the little plunger type stuff. Then you have all the the the, the kibble uh, fixtures for just whatever pipe or internals for exhaust and uh, fixtures for everything. Hmm. Uh, this again, this process has changed quite a bit. Uh, whereas the fixture process, and up until probably about two or three years ago, we would have to do. Uh, have the car for an extended period of time and basically do everything on the car. Mm -hmm. uh, with all the 3D printing stuff and our new process, in reality we need only the car for two weeks and then after scanning and everything else, we can go away and we just do everything else, you know, through CAD or whatever, then bring the car back and get the some sound evaluation for the job. They're making yeah. spacers. spacers they do spacers. Uh, they do a lot of their uh, turbo modifications here. Uh, the only thing Dyna really does anymore uh, require these type machines would be there's some suspension bits, uh, but mainly just throttle bodies. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for a long time in Morgan Hill, we actually did everything by by lathe and did it all by hand. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the the personal in house there to do it, and I, I hate to say that we he didn't move with us, but it's unfortunate that he was awesome. Yeah. Um, and so now we're doing the machines, which has been a, a process of tweaking and getting all the programming down and trying to hold it. We're just kind of tribal knowledge in the past. So these, like the mufflers, were made somewhere for you? and then No, we do everything in the house. Uh, well, take that back. We do most things in the house. So some of the, some of the bent pieces? Uh, yeah, two things. We don't have a pipe bender in house, so we get that. We outsource that. Uh, in the past, that was done through Flowmaster, uh, which was part of the, the big group. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Flowmaster is kind of being absorbed into the, the more traditional Holly brands, mm -hmm. uh, the Hooker, Blackheart, uh, Slowtex, all those guys. Uh, it's still going to have the brand, obviously, but uh, so now the, we'll be getting piping from, I believe it's Blackheart. One of the other sister companies. <laughs> um, uh, At some point, this building will be expanded and actually move farther back. Uh, the original plan uh, with APR was actually to have a test track in the back. Mm -hmm. You can actually see kind of where it was originally intended to go. Never actually happened. Uh, so. It's kind of a boring now, but uh, this is a uh, hardware engineering, uh, the main offices, uh, mainly APR, but um, doing gadgets, doing holdings and turbos, and God knows what else. 
Uh, brake room with racing simulator, which hmm. we're always finds of using. Yeah. Yeah, this is the fabrication shop. Uh, a lot of the R&D stuff, or a lot of the dining R&D happens on this side, but mm -hmm. there's HR in here as well. Uh, right now, like I said, we have the F90 M5 that we're kind of doing a lot of things on. There's suspension on there, coilover on there. Or tow links on it. Tow links. Uh, Monowalls. Wanna lift it up, Rexy? Show that real quick. Your arm here and hmm. back arm. Uh, these are going to be outlined, they're not filled. And Interesting. You won't see a lot of those machining marks. Yeah. It's a lot more processed, but uh, so rather than rather than your typical straight toe arm, uh, the stock one was bent too, wasn't it? It's bent too. Hmm. Yeah. You can't you can't go straight. It'll yeah. crash into the sway bar. Got it. But it reduces a lot of the deflection and everything else. Just I mean, there's monoballs and stuff on this one as well, right? What was that? Monoballs are on this one as well. In the front. Yeah. yeah. So full mid pipe. Well, we're yeah. not doing a full mid pipe. It's a resonator delete. To the next in here. Yeah. So cats are still intact, uh, but basically from there on back is new. So we've talked I mean, about doing full, but the packaging in here is so tight it would be almost impossible to get any anything bigger in there. Yeah. I mean, what is currently available is the axle back, so here back. Mm -hmm. uh, the mid pipe, we're still. I think it's in Frontin Cadland or something. We need the uh, E92. You need the E92 uh, middle racing exhaust yeah. back. Screw California. Who cares about California? <laughs> you guys should just pull out of California altogether. Yeah. No one cares about that. I wish that was that easy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I mean, that's kind of the next iteration of uh, N Links and stuff. Uh, uh, that's actually going to be the first product that you're going to see a, uh, a change in boxing as well. We're actually doing custom boxes and hmm. stuff on that one. Kind of starting new with the F90 M5 in general. Yeah. Uh, trying to change the change the image a little bit, starting with that car. Seems to be a nice starting point to do it. Hmm. Uh, also in here, X5M, a yeah. customer's car that we've been tweaking uh, uh, exhaust, but also software stuff for. This is full. Uh, this is just just, just a cat back or this is all back rather. Yeah. Never did mid pipe for that one. Although at this point I kind of wish we did, but yeah, a little, little late in the game for it now. It's not worth the uh, yeah six months of R and D just to have it go away next year. So. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> you got a pile of random exhaust here. Uh, this is the stock M2 competition muffler in back there. Mm -hmm. This is the stock X5M muffler. This was a prototype M2 comp prototype. muffler, I believe, and mid pipe for resonator lead, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple other experiments over there. <laughs> uh, but in general, we probably go through five to ten prototypes in the exhaust, give or take, and just doing sound testing and seeing what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, the M2 comp, its biggest thing was it made it sound pretty good pretty quick. Uh, I was just chasing the drone. Yeah. And we, we uh, this last iteration seems to have solved that pretty well. So, uh, prototype for the G35 3 uh, That particular car has the trapezoidal tips, just like a Mercedes or whatever else does. And when we put the circle tips on there, they just don't look right because they're cut out. Mm -hmm. So, I figured it was as good a time as any, and since these are coming more and more common, to try our own hand at it and see where it goes. So, this is the, these aren't the production ones, obviously, but gives you kind of an idea of what we're looking at. Um, currently waiting on some uh, black hooded ones for the customer car that we have lined up before it come in, so we can just do what we're doing. What car is this? This is a G3540. It's kind of the uh, bastard child of the BMW world. Uh, it's super popular, but the problem is most of the parts on that particular car only fit that car. So between exhaust and intake, it's all unique to it, so it's kind of just a problem child to make stuff for. Yeah. So these are all 3D printed, obviously. Uh, basically get a uh, CAD drawing, uh, actual CAD drawing, and then kind of the Lego piece chart. So they build them and basically have uh, positioning points uh, on the uh, table here. No, that was, that was on there, yeah. <laughs> uh, but basically, 
basically to isolate all the uh, key positions and then you can basically just take pipe and start legoing it all together. So this would be a new process rather than building a big steel jig. Uh, you still do the steel jig later for production purposes, but mm -hmm. for R&D, uh, you can do all the stuff without having a camera on the top. You're uh, literally just doing a scan. Uh, I'm going to show you the scanners one. There's, we have three of them. There we go. Well, there's one there. There's one pharaoh. We have two pharaohs, which are the stationary ones. Yep. Then we have a handheld one. Probably just the handheld one and just basically scan our car. You know, dots or whatever. And put it in the CAD and. Then from that, you kind of know what Lego pieces you need and do this and do everything on the bench here. Um, I mean, in reality, uh, an exhaust has seven or eight points that you really need to take into account. You know, mm -hmm. inlet, outlet, tip locations, hanger locations. Everything else, you just kind of build where you can and mm -hmm. do what you can. So uh, that's kind of what this process is. Uh, ultimately, once you, you know, test fit and find a good sound or whatever, then it, then it comes back to here and you build an actual real steel jig for production, but um, this cuts out a lot of the process because doing a steel jig every time you make a change is a nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, so, like I said, this cut out a lot of process in the exhaust side of it. The X5M picture, just here, so, cool. so eventually after that process, it would come into here, make a steel jig for it, um, and it can go on a rotisserie and actually do well to do that. But most of the stuff in here is all fabrication. We have all the scrap metal in here. And do you, do you make valves or are they sourced? Valves are sourced. Uh, back in the day, I'd say up until about four or five years ago, uh, we actually just did BMW valves. Mm -hmm. uh, then they started having issues, so we kind of got away from them. Not to mention they were expensive. So when, when they're expensive and they still had issues, it's like, okay, we need to do yeah. something else. Uh, so we've we've. Went through, I think, two vendors at this point, and um, the current vendor, we kind of have them make it to our specifications at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. Slowly, we had all the random issues that cropped up. In, in general, this is you. Oh, forgot to say, I mentioned that M2 comp is the uh, CCA Cartier Trains car that we're going to be building. Ah, okay. So, I haven't quite got there. The year after the summit, we'll probably go for more on this, but mm -hmm. that's pretty much fitting to you. This, this particular garage used to be essentially what that garage was. Um, it is. This used to be the, uh, the APR R&D garage, and that was the performance garage, which was ready to do the customer installs and all the race team stuff. Mm -hmm. So once we got here, that kind of got shifted over there. The fab area, uh, where it is now, was actually where we just were, where the diamond exhaust stuff was. And that was the fab area before. So everything's kind of doing this jump around as we're moving stuff around and, mm -hmm. and there'll be quite a bit more of it I'm sure. So yeah. until you figure out what flow works best. Well I mean we're getting there. It's just because of everything constantly moving, nothing ever really gets solidified anywhere. So is there a guy, an operations guy in charge of figuring yes, out? Yes, uh, our facilities manager, he sure hates life, but yeah. he's he's getting there. <laughs> I mean in the next room we're going to you'll see the uh, probably the biggest problem area. Uh, or right now it's just a storage yeah. area that you see the motor cork around. Yeah. Ultimately this will be receiving, or shipping rather, mm -hmm. and all the finished goods will be stored in here. Uh, part of the racking is for in here and you can on the belt. Uh, uh, before, this was the motorsport garage where we keep the RV and racing trailers and all that type of stuff. Whereas now we just say, hey, screw it, we're going outside because we don't have the room to store them inside anymore. Uh, we still have Eventually, the the, uh, the alignment rack that's over there on the other side is going to be replaced with this hunter that we, it's a much newer one that we brought from California. Mm -hmm. But we have to, uh, it's in ground, so we have to do a bunch of uh, contract work there. Eventually. Uh, the cage in the back here was APR's old race stuff. We're going to show a bunch of random stuff in there. As you see, this is kind of the catch all at the moment. <laughs> This would be the Mustang down the one that is most used at this point. Uh, but this one, uh, like I said before, I mean, it can simulate zero to 60 in quarter mile times. Uh, when we go out to Birmingham to uh, compare the results that this thing produces, uh, it's pretty 
as well. So it's pretty spot on. Uh, I've also calibrated the uh, between this and the Diamond Pack, we essentially agreed the same. Uh, so even if we do one card here, then go to put a Beno, if this one's used or something, then still regard the same. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the Mustang also simulates uh, Dyna Pack or Dyna Jet numbers, uh, so you can do that if for the uh, Horizon. So we'll see what the new uh, M2 comp is. Valve's closed. It's as good as you can get. Man, the uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, see how it's cool. see how it's done. So anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for coming along on the tour with us. Well, uh, well, I'm sure I'll be doing more of this cool stuff as time goes on. I've always been such a big dining fan. It's cool to see you know where they are currently and where they're heading and get the inside scoop. So anyway, I'll check you out on the next one. Thanks for watching. pulls you back your foot naturally comes off the gas you have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, the floor, the floor.